welcome to the uber cordero show if you haven't yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified each time we upload a new video what's up uber hi olivia how, how are you are doing i'm good how are you great so this week we talk about women let's talk about women uber oh that's an interesting topic okay so this week we're talking about gender and politics in africa before we go ahead i'd really like for uber to really uh, give us the definition of gender that we will be working with in this video oh okay now he, thank you olivia for that question yeah it's good to set the parameters now gender uh from what i talk in this show here would refer to uh, socially constructed attributes that are defined by society mm -hmm. which uh, define how men and boys or uh, girls and women are expected to behave and uh, gender changes from societies with different expectation mm -hmm. but um they kind of define how people are expected to behave gender is not biology it, it is constructed mm -hmm. is from society mm -hmm. uh when we come to sex in this regard uh which defines uh, men and women is has been dichotomous for a long time but it's not really that's not the end of it could mm -hmm. be more mm -hmm. so sex and gender are different yeah, so um, we do realize that gender is such a common feature in most societies and gender in inequality is so pervasive in Africa and the consequences are so detrimental to the development of Africa, you know. And so I really want to know, like, why is it that women, the women's sex, would you say? Yeah, you could say just women. Oh, okay. So yeah. why is it that women are not adequately re represented in politics of Africa? Well, the, the women are not represented in the politics of Africa because of how society has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, if you study African pre-colonial society, women actually held high positions of power. There were queens who were women. Mm -hmm. uh, there were heads of state who were women. There was the queen, the queen mother who tended to be the mother of a uh, of the king mm -hmm. who had high position in the society, sort of like prime ministers. But as Africa entered the colonial and the post-colonial society, the role of women in politics were relegated mm -hmm. because uh, they entered a position of a cash economy and women tended to stay home and men went out there to make more money and the value of their labor made them acquire more power. Mm -hmm. And this power then translated into statecraft and politics and knowledge and women were sort of left behind yeah. because most families had to make a choice between women or men and yeah. they tended to choose the men because they kept the family going so why is it that today women are left out from the table in legislatures and in state houses in africa well because uh, politics is very competitive yeah and it requires a lot of resources. Politics is organized in Africa. Doesn't mean it's the same everywhere, mm -hmm. but because the, it requires resources and mobilization and also the public perception of, of gender, of women as the weaker sex, of women as left in, in private spaces mm -hmm. uh, as their only voice of authority, places of voice of authority. The, and then it means that they have no stake at the, in, at the national scene. And those women who have made it in this arena mm -hmm. uh, I've also not made it in the same power with other males mm -hmm. so they don't have a higher position that's really how a descriptive uh, analysis of what has happened it doesn't gives it an excuse that it is right yeah yeah so from this imbalance of power do you think that it's just peculiar to Africa or is this ongoing in all other continents it is not peculiar to Africa mm -hmm. Uh, in America, I mean, how many, is, they have not even reached 20% of women in Congress. Um, America also has not had uh, a woman president. I mm -hmm. mean, Hillary came close, but she didn't make it. Yeah. Some people have argued that the reason she didn't make it because it was of sexism mm -hmm. as one of, not the only, but yeah. one of them. You know, UK has a parliamentary system. They had Margaret Thatcher. Uh, some countries like South Korea, Brazil, uh, Argentina, and a sortment of other countries have had women as heads of state. Um, but it's, you tend to be r rare mm -hmm. for, for these things to occur than the norm. The norm is politics is dominated by middle-aged old men. Yeah. Middle-aged men, they can't be old. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 
<laughs> yeah so um what is the role of capitalism and how does capitalism breed uh, this gender inequality yes it like i said in the first question you yeah. asked capitalism rewards uh labor yeah. it places value on the labor that one provides now if you live in an industrial society then the owners of those labor the the employers yeah have more power and they get to dictate policy so you find owners of capital more politically engaged mm -hmm. in decision making because the fact them in africa which is not yet an industrial state has been transforming from being um a society that relies on subsistence towards industrialization mm -hmm. started in 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 colonial age reward from land uh like planting crops mm -hmm. or minerals tended to reward women and as women stayed home yeah. to be as primary caregivers the value of their labor was reduced the society wow. wouldn't see it and those whose labor was rewarded became powerful yeah you know businessmen uh industrial owners political appointees administrators none of these roles was for women yeah. and a few women also went to school it is not natural it is not a natural condition of life. If it was natural, you will see a lot more women gaining positions of power as it had been yeah. for the longest history of mankind. The idea that women are not in power is not a natural condition. I want to make that very yeah. clear. Huh? I just wonder like yeah. how is it that you know yeah. those legislators um, or the legislators are able to make decisions without women at the table, you know? Yeah, the consequence is dire. Yeah. If a society excludes about 50% of the members in decision making and the decisions that are made in these houses at the political level are also very consequential. For example, you're going to decide uh, issues of life and death. How many women, uh, how many kids women should have? Yeah. Should they have abortion? How should their husband treat them? Do they have right mm. to inherit land? Yeah. Do they have... Um, ownership of the country in which they live in without having women's yeah. input <laughs> yeah and they you know they de decide this every day yeah. and you wonder that policies that are made tend to hurt not only the state that make them yeah. but also it does hurt the the generation the children yeah uh you, you know could you um expound a little bit about um african womanhood and the differences between african womanhood black feminism and you know western feminism good question very good because uh, there are people who always talk about feminism as utilitarian as including everybody mm -hmm. but it is not because one african womanhood or african men feminism is very distinct from industrial or european feminism mm -hmm. african feminism works in tandem with men is the uh women finding power and yeah. equality within these spaces african spaces yeah. so uh, one of the things that it does is it doesn't look bad on motherhood on having children yeah. they see it as a natural process mm -hmm. as roles of women secondly it doesn't see uh domestic work or uh being a wife to somebody as a negative badge for you yeah. it rather celebrates it motherhood is given priority uh, being a wife is given priority. Mm -hmm. uh, staying home and raising your kid is given priority. That is African woman. It, it said you. Ca it says that you can rise with your man together, mm -hmm. and you can be a feminist even within uh, a, a domestic culture that lets the woman stays home. In terms of priority, you mean that uh, it's the same as a man who's going to work. So they're the they're the same level. They are the same level. Ah, That's okay, African okay, feminism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the second one is black feminism, the, which comes out of the experiences of the, uh, of the black people in Americas mm -hmm. that, um, g gender and sex are intersectional things and they, they gender, sex and race mm -hmm. are, are intersectional. And, uh, uh, a woman went through the experiences of being othered as a woman and secondly, being othered as a black woman. Yeah. So they, uh, but even within this othering, mm -hmm. Uh, in the agit agitation for ending of Jim Crow in the civil rights era, women are sidelined at the top by male 
men of the clergy and civil rights leaders who do not see their place. In fact, some nationalist groups like Ma, uh, Malcolm X, uh, you know, Nation of Islam, they reduced the woman outside completely. So wow. black feminism mm -hmm. do not want to share the same space with general feminism because they see that the white woman's experience is very different from the black yeah. woman's experience. So black woman has been uh, disadvantaged by black men and by uh, a society that premises whiteness over blackness. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in the African culture, we have the aspect of dowry or, you know, in some cultures, they call it Mari or um, the Loloba. Lobola. Lobola. Okay. Yeah. So um, how does this affect politics and power? Well, um, I think that is a very contentious thing and I don't want to be set on a trap. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to tell you, Olivia. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with Lobola or Mahari payments. I don't think it is a price on the woman. I think it is an appreciation to the parents for raising a fine daughter and to the culture. Mm -hmm. What I do have a problem is when it is monetized so that it refers to the value of the woman. So like how many degrees you have, yeah. how beautiful you are means you, you know, that your husband gets to pay. I think we should think about it the same way we think about the ring, the diamond ring. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, uh, Western society tend to bash things that are African without even critiquing themselves. Exactly. If, if we are going to accept the ring, like which I'm wearing one right mm -hmm. now, as a symbol of what in your marriage, we should do the same for the Lobola. I mean, it should be equally treated. The idea of going hard on Lobola as a bride price, it's yeah. not a bride price, it's a dowry. It's a cultural symbol, appreciating womanhood and appreciating the institution of marriage. So what I don't understand yeah. is like, if it is appreciating women, then why isn't it done to the men? Like, why can't the woman's family appreciate the man too, if it's not a bride price? Some, some cultures do that. Hmm. Some cultures do that. Hmm. It's not a uniform. Some don't. I don't have an answer to it. And so what your argument is in the Western world, that the women should also go down on their knee and give the, the ring. I think that's fair if one wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very fair. I, but for politically speaking, yeah. I don't think... It does, it does have significance is that if a woman has been married in another community or another family, mm -hmm. their political power is transferred from their home base to the place where they're married. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving on from that, can you talk about patronage and politics in, in connection to gender imbalance? Yes, that is a big topic because uh, as even though there are some countries that are uh, making reforms on women representation, representation like mm -hmm. Uganda, Rwanda, which have the highest, about 60% of their legislators are women, mm -hmm. um, it's noble, it's, it's commendable. Mm -hmm. There is also this idea of patronage mm -hmm. that women affiliated with powerful men rise through the rank politically mm -hmm. faster than women outside the political patronage system. Mm -hmm. So you have here women like in Kenya, you have Mamangina Kenyatta, yeah. who's one of the wealthiest women in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, where you have De Sonta's daughter, what is her name? Um, uh, who was the richest woman in, uh, I'm going to write her name on the comment. Uh, she was the richest woman in Africa mm -hmm. because of her affiliation to Eduardo de Santos, mm -hmm. who was the president of Angola for a long time. Uh, you also have cases of Lamini Zuma, who is by herself an accomplished woman, yeah. ran for president in South Africa, was defeated, defeated by Ramaphosa. Mm -hmm. But the question is, if these women were in a, uh, family members yeah. or in connection with this powerful man, will they still have that position? Yeah. And that's a question. And it's not exclusive to Africa. I mean, Hillary Clinton, of course, she's commendable and very, you know, high achieving person. Mm -hmm. But would not she be in a Senate of New York mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Bill? This is a question. I'm not trying to say that they are less than or they can't do it. Yeah. I'm just saying that the manner in which these positions come has to be examined a little more. And if Africa has to, include women's uh, participation in politics, mm -hmm. then it has to create an environment that allows everybody to thrive mm -hmm. and not only those who are connected to some powerful men. Yeah, um, a question that I've just been wondering based on the 
uh, Beijing platform in action, some initiatives were set out. Do you feel like those initiatives have been put into practice? Yes, uh, after J Beijing conference in 1995, there's yeah. been a lot of push to include women, increase women's access to education, women's employment, women's participation in, in, in civic duties. There's some achievement, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. The, it, the likelihood of women graduating college has increased, I don't have the, the graphs here, but it has increased exponentially. Yeah. But women's decision-making power are, are sitting at CEOs of companies or hiring people or the, at legislative bodies mm -hmm. has not been at par with their rise in educational attainment. Yeah. yeah. So there's still a problem there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as we wrap up, uh, Uba, I just have a final question. You know, as a political science guru, do you think um, the authoritarian um, political system or democratic system best supports uh, gender equality? Yeah, I want to correct. I'm not yet a guru. There. It's still a long way to go. But yeah, uh -huh. I've always said in this show yeah. that democracies are better, are best mm -hmm. in solving some of these problems, mm -hmm. even though uh, the modalities of democracy have to be organic to the environment that they operate in. Yeah. So if you have an authoritarian regime, which can promise economic development in the short term mm -hmm. like rwanda is doing right yeah or, or uganda did in the 90s mm -hmm. but they tend to disintegrate because they're highly personalized there is no guarantee mm -hmm. that when the charismatic leader or what they call the benevolent leader leaves then these institutions are mature enough to continue yeah. so then it will be bad for women because you will find they they could lead into war and wars affect more women yeah. than and children than it does to men. Yeah. Men become the fighters, the combatants. These women, victims of rape and violence. Mm -hmm. In that way, authority, authoritarian re regime and wrench and trench the you know weakening of women's position in society. Mm -hmm. Democracy are flawed by nature. The decision pro making process is longer and tenuous, mm -hmm. uh, tedious. But and in the end, sanity always prevails. Yeah. And this is good for women because it builds consensus. Now, how this can be achieved, especially in Kenya, where they're talking about two-third gender rules in, in, the poli in, in parliament, is simple. My solution is simple. Have every elective position, mm -hmm. have two representatives, men and women, vote them as a ticket. Yeah. And it's solved. I don't know why we have to go through this alabolu of, you know, finding a solution. It's simple. Represent the society in the institution of government. Yeah. President, vice president, woman. woman. Senator, uh, another senator like that. And we have a solution, right? It's simple. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, we look forward to your comments and your feedback in the comment section. Till next time. Thank you. Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs>